Right. I hope you can all see the screen now. Uh, the uh, order of the program is as follows. Um, we have uh, first you know, the welcoming and the introduction to the seminar, which I will give in a minute, uh, won't be too long. Then we are very pleased to have uh, Ambassador Pinas Avivi from Israel, who will uh, talk to us uh, uh, and on behalf of Ambassador Yoram Morad as well, I will introduce each speaker as we go along, uh, but uh, the, um, Ambassador Avivi uh, will take care of the presentation by Mr. Morad as well. So we will have uh, that first, and then we will go uh, to Mr. Nader Sadiri in Washington, D.C., in the United States, to give an uh, introduction to the project. Uh, by the way, you, you see the word Omide Iran uh, there. Omid is hope, uh, Omide Iran, the hope for Iran, hope for Iran, project of hope for Iran in uh, uh, translation, if we want to put it. Then Dr. Hushang Lahuti in Perth, Australia, uh, will uh, join us to uh, talk uh, and give an overview of the project. Uh, then after that, uh, engineer uh, Mr. Uh, Mardavich Ziari, who's next to me, we are both here in the UK. We will give the main part of the engineering aspects of the project. Then biodesalination of saline soil is uh, by me. Uh, energy aspects of the project by Dr. Tari Alireza in California, United States. Uh, then Dr. Ali Mohseni in Pennsylvania, I believe is uh, in United States, agricultural aspects of the project. And then again, at the end, Dr. Lahuti will talk uh, about the environmental aspects and uh, Mr. Sadiri will wrap everything up uh, in terms of overall conclusion. And we have a question and answer session afterwards, which will keep it open as long as we have time. We have this room here at the university for four hours, but obviously the presentations will take some time, uh, but we should have a good one hour, I say, for uh, question and answer towards the end. So that's the order of the uh, uh, program. Uh, I'll uh, just uh, uh, greetings to everyone who's joining at the moment. Uh, Professor uh, Hassan Henry Safavi, uh, who's in Spain at the moment, and oh, Dr. Lahuti has joined us as well. Greetings to you from London, Dr. Lahuti. Thank you. So uh, I would like to say a few words about this uh, seminar, this project. Uh, little bit, but Mr. Sadiri will uh, give a Their shortage is a catastrophe of biblical proportion facing the world at the moment. Countries located in arid parts of the world, such as Iran, are in imminent destruction because of water mismanagement and distribution. Uh, recently, there was a report saying that uh, from NASA that uh, the water crisis, not just in Iran, but many parts of Middle East and the world, if it is not solved by 2030, uh, there will be a huge consequences of that. And there will be millions of refugees uh, scattering around the world because of the lack of water in their countries. Uh, Iran's underground water consumed rapidly without repl replenishment. And uh, we are uh, now here, wh why we are gathered here uh, online and in person. Uh, we are a group of patriotic Iranian academics and engineers and uh, experts who developed a project called the New Horizon, the Hope for Future, to answer the critical water shortage in Iran. It is a concept that we are uh, uh, giving you here. It is a proposal, I can say it is, and hopefully it will be 
uh, implemented in future when the political, economic, and all the situation are right in Iran. This project combines environmental sciences and the state of the art engineering to bring desalinated water from the Persian Gulf over the high mountains to the Caspian Sea. This project creates millions of jobs and develops modern cities with amenities to help reduce population densities and stop migration from rural to urban cities. Modern agricultural practices will help acquire lands for food uh, production and rejuvenate the ecosystem, uh, which develops modern highways. It also develops modern highways connecting the north to the south of Iran for communal purposes. I just say a few words quickly, six points that I would like to mention, and then I will go to our keynote speaker, Ambassador Avivi in Israel. Desalination happens at different levels based on the needs of the location. We are going to talk a lot about desalination in this uh, presentation. However, desalination to lowest level of potential use in agriculture or industrial sectors, maximum salt content not potable at the starting point would reduce the amount of water that would be pumped and would also reduce the energy use. Different, uh, different from desalination at the potable level and using it for agricultural and industrial purposes. Development of new technologies for treatment of soil, such as biotechnologies, which I will make a pre short presentation on that. This is not proposed as far as we know anywhere else, uh, except for other applications. Use of solar energy for desalination through thermal evaporation. This is used in some countries, but not proposed for use in Iran. The amount of water to be transported in very large uh, is, is very large and vastly higher than what is proposed in present plans and plans that you hear these days uh, from various sectors. Solar and wind energy can be used for pumps and any further desalination efforts. This is not again proposed in Iran. These are all, I'm saying all these points about what is to come. This is a large, term, this is a long term uh, project that takes a, a long time and large sums of funds to construct. This will hopefully save uh, Iran from future droughts and this catastrophic lack of water. So here uh, I would like to uh, go to our uh, keynote uh, speaker, uh, Ambassador Pinas Avivi. Ambassador Pinas Avivi is a former senior deputy director general of uh, uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Israel, where he was responsible for global strategic and multilateral affairs. So he knows this area of water and water management very well. And as you're all aware, Israel uh, has got some of the most advanced technologies in water treatment, water management in the world. And who better than give us a talk on this uh, than Ambassador Avivi and our other friends and colleagues in Israel. He served as Israel's ambassador to Chile, Colombia, and Turkey. Ambassador Avivi also served as deputy director general in charge of the Central Europe, Eurasia, and Russia division, deputy director general and head of the South America and the Caribbean division, and acting deputy director general and head of the Middle East and peace process divisions. Uh, Mr. Uh, Avivi, Ambassador Avivi, uh, has been involved with the Israeli-Palestinian peace talks and uh, various other uh, positions. Ambassador Yoram Morad, who's not going to be with us, but his presentation will be made by uh, Ambassador Avivi, is a director of Digital Diplomacy Unit at Israel's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, Ambassador Avivi, microphone with you and uh, the share screen is also free for you 
good to use, please. Now the next item is the overview of the project actually, and it will be presented by Dr. Hushang Lahuti, our friend in Australia, our colleague and friend in Australia, Dr. Hushang Lahuti, Doctor of Science as well. Uh, he's a principal medical scientist and lecturer teaching evidence-based medicine at Nepian um, Clinical School, the University of Sydney in Australia. He studied in England and Norway, he did his PhD in molecular and cellular biology, MSc in biochemistry and biochemical endocrinology. Um, he and BSc in medical laboratory sciences. He's a specialized in clinical chemistry. His first postdoc fellowship was at Imperial Cancer Research Fund in London, UK, and a second postdoctoral uh, fellowship was for, with the Norwegian Cancer Research Society. He has authored uh, more than 50 peer-reviewed research articles in basic and applied medical research primary research focus on molecular genetics of thyroid IPT, thyroid and I have, he has also um, published many articles on autoimmune thyroid disorder and developed a unique laboratory test to help manage patients with various thyroid and thyroid disorder. Dr. Lahuti, please. Uh, but um, if you allow me now, I will go part of this project now, and um, I will now uh, have to present you a short presentation in terms of uh, uh, biodesalination, and I will talk about it why, as it was shortly mentioned uh, in the presentation, previous presentation. Uh, I need to uh, PDF formats, if you allow me. Yeah. Uh, first of all, if I just want to briefly introduce myself, actually, is I'm Namdar Bagoy Yazdi. Uh, I run my own um, biotechnology company, uh, which is uh, Biotech Consultants Limited. I am a visiting uh, lecturer here at University of Westminster and also at University of Bedfordshire in Luton um, uh, in the areas of biotechnology and environmental science. And uh, I've, I've got nearly 35 years of uh, experience in the area of biotechnology, especially biofuel and uh, biomaterials and uh, bio-based uh, chemicals platform chemicals, as well as uh, um, um, oil and gas microbiology. I have done some work in there. I was the recipient of the uh, 1993 uh, French Serial Organizations, uh, Serial de France uh, Prize, a Serial Prize, which was to do with production of ethanol from agricultural waste and residues at the doses. And I'm continuing in the same field. Uh, what I'm trying to uh, present here uh, to you is, uh, if I may go to the uh, full screen, hopefully it will come, yes. Biodesalination, we were talking about desalination in the previous, in Mr. Ziari's uh, presentation uh, by using solar power, solar energy, and other uh, kinds of uh, desalination, reverse osmosis and things. This project goes back a good nearly tw uh, 20 years ago, 19 years ago, when I was working at Imperial College with my colleague, uh, Dr. Mohammad Javed, we were working on a project with Shell Oil to desalinate the produced water from uh, oil fields. You know, with every barrel of oil which is extracted from the ground, uh, seven or eight barrels of salty water, uh, brackish water type of thing comes out with it. And Shell Oil were interested in order to desalinate those water in the Middle East, wherever they had operations, especially in Oman, uh, in order to use that uh, 
partially you can say uh, or nearly complete uh, but not 100 percent obviously desalinated water uh, for irrigation and this was their game-changing uh, sort of process that they wanted to my task and my colleagues task were uh, to in order to do this which i will show briefly i won't bore you with a lot of technicalities and genetics and all that, but was to reverse the transport system of these bacteria in order to uh, accumulate sodium in them and expel potassium uh, outside. And then uh, we will see how we go about it. What we were working on was a bacterium, which is actually not a bacterium uh, in classical form, it's an archaea. Archaea uh, was is a group of uh, microorganisms which was um, uh, which they don't have uh, nuclear nucleus in their cells, and they are they have different sort of properties and characteristics than ordinary bacteria. So this Halobacterium sal salinarum is the type that uh, you will find uh, in uh, uh, in that picture. You see that halo of uh, nice, beautiful, pinkish color on a, a salt lake, actually. And this is where these bacteria, these, these archaea, these microorganisms accumulate. So the color comes from these, you know, they have a pigment in them which goes into this color. If you have visited Dead Sea in Israel or Salt Lake in America, Salt Lake City and the Salt Lake there, or anywhere anywhere else in our Iran, Lake Urumia, Lake Reza uh, they all have this sort of color in them. So we worked on this halo bacterium and the work that we are proposing here, it hasn't been done. We are going to test this, we are to, uh, uh, you know, experiment with it and see if we can take saline soil and by washing it and producing uh, what the, 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 the produced water that we get from that, putting it into a bioreactor and by using these uh, microorganisms, this halobacterium, we will be able to desalinate it or deionize it essentially, separate the salt, separate the sodium and expel the potassium. And then the improved water, which has lower salt and lower metal, metal ions, can be used for agriculture and other irrigation things. And then uh, obviously the salt uh, will be the salt in form of sodium, sodium chloride will be separated. You, you also end up with a biomass sludge, which is high in salt and metal rich. And that can be, uh, uh, we can work on that to recover the metal and salt from that. And the use of that sludge could be in agriculture again, as a biofertilizer. As a biofertilizer can be used, which is a useful thing to do. So the basic requirements for a desalinating microorganism is a sodium selective uptake pump. So you, you know, usually in nature, sodium is expelled, potassium is taken. We reverse this natural process by genetically modifying the organism and you, uh, making it absorb uh, sodium and expel potassium. A cheap source of energy to drive the pump this, this, this internal pump, this natural pump uh, in, in these microorganisms and able to tolerate high intracellular sodium concentration. Uh, we have a saying in Farsi that anything that is rotting, we throw salt at it. Uh, what happens when the salt is rotten? You know, this is what exactly we are doing here essentially you know these uh, the microorganisms pick up the salt and they can uh, uh, use that they, they can grow on 20 percent uh, uh, 20 percent uh, concentration of salt you can imagine this concentration of salt in the sea sea, uh, sea water is no more than four percent usually 3.5 3.8 percent but here we are talking about uh, 
very high concentration. So they are tolerant to that sort of thing. I won't bother you with this. This is a genome sequence of these halobacterium species, which we, in, in that box there that you can see, we managed to manipulate the genes there and convert the, uh, re the reverse the gene for uh, sodium and potassium transport in this vector, in these microorganisms. So main strategies, again, I won't bother you with these, a lot of, you know, uh, genes involved and a lot of um, uh, sodium and potassium pumps in these bacteria, in these microorganisms that need to be looked at. We have done that. We know the, how to do it, actually, and it is possible to use that technology, hopefully for desalinating the saline soil of Iran or any other country. And the additional approaches is if we can take the uh, ordinary bacterium E. coli, for example, and I isolate and clone the genes in the, the sodium binding protein gene into E. coli and try to uh, absorb that uh, in there or another bacterium bacillus uh, pseudoformis can be uh, followed by its purification and using sequestering the sodium ions and also an anaerobic moderate halophile like halobacterium acetylicum, acetylicum uh, which is probably the only known organism that does not attempt to keep sodium ions out of its cytoplasm, it keeps it in. So this is my short presentation. This is a proposal again to use this in, uh, for the future of this project and as part of this, and also this brings up now, brings us to uh, the point of how much energy we need for all of these things, obviously, for the presentation that Mr. Ziari uh, showed and uh, all the other things that we need to do here in order to be able to provide and complete this whole uh, mega project, let's say this mega or super projects. So I'll stop my presentation here, and I, with the, I know we have quite a lot of questions, I think, put in the chat area. I'll go right to the top, actually, and see where we are. Uh, question asked for uh, Ambassador Avivi. Unfortunately, as I said, he had to go. Don't forget, Israel is two hours ahead of us here in UK. At the moment, their time is uh, 10, 20 past 10. Uh, so unfortunately he wasn't able, but I, I am collecting all these questions, I'm recording them, and I will definitely pass it to him so he can answer them more, uh, you know, in, informally. Uh, anything else uh, about echoing? Sorry about some technical problems. This is, uh, although it is my university, but it's my first time in this lecture theater, so I wasn't quite sure how things will turn out to be, so I apologize. I think there was a question for me, Dr. Bam. Yes, yes, dear Dr. The desalinating water and is simply unrealistic. Uh, yeah. It is a uh, but concept, but not a practical one, as the electricity requirement would be immense and the environmental impact extensive with best regards dr bahram Piyasi. dr Piyasi is one of our uh, friends here in the uk who is very much into nuclear energy he's an expert on international law as well but especially related to nuclear energy would you like to answer dr lahuti would you like to say a few words on that well in fact in a regard the energy i think in a dr uh, Ola Reza answered that one. And in fact, if the Dr. Kios is after the specification of the pumps and the generation of the, you know, the, no, the type of the turbine, I can't answer those sort of things because it's not you know, feasible at the moment to answer that. Despite the fact that man, the Ziarek, has worked out many of these sort of things. And, and why unrealistic? Why we should be negative about something? It, this uh, this um, MRT, 
Emirat is doing the desalination. Saudi Arabia is doing the desalination. In Perth, they are doing the desalination. In many places, they are doing that one and they are using it. How can it be practical for them and impractical for us? Huh? My question I, I, is, I just want to add, I, I, you know, I, I just want to add the same thing. Yeah. Energy production in Iran is the cheapest uh, uh, yeah. among all the world because we have the second largest reservoir of gas in we have, so the, the gas uh, electricity production in Iran cannot cost us more than two and a half cent uh, per kWh. It's definitely it's not feasible to do it in Europe. It's not feasible to do it where the fuel has to be purchased to produce electricity. But when you have cheaper uh, power available to you, then it could be uh, one of the uh, desalinization methods. But at this time, as it, uh, Dr. Mrs. Sadari mentioned and everybody else has mentioned, this project is a concept. And the concept does not has has not uh, excluded any approach. Is that included all the approaches as to how much desalinization will be happening by reverse osmosis versus by solar or other methods? It is not have has not have, they have not been decided. So all of uh, what is mentioned, yes, it takes a lot of energy. I agree. But is it reasonable for Iran? Yes, as it is for other nations around Iran. Thank you. And Thank my, you very much. I may, I, I, I may add, Jenna, Dr. Bagai, I may also add yes, that in, in Australia, we are, you know, we tra transport the water to the high mountains of the nearly thousand meter. And uh, they have, you know, built up you know, with the pipes and also with the every uh, kilometer or even every 500 meter, there is a station that the water goes like a step by a step, a step by a step. So this sort of a project has been, I really, been taught about. In China, they are also doing this similar type of a project. And in fact, in the world of uh, Dr. Lyons from University of San Francisco uh, in California in Oregon said that if Iran can, if California. we can do this Irvine. project, Irvine, if, if we do, do this project, that will be a model for the rest of the world. What is wrong with having a concept that can be feasible, that is workable, that is been thought of? All the ideas in the world are like that. And then they can go forward. Without the idea, we cannot go forward. We cannot say impractical with the technology that we have today. And this technology and the knowledge will help us to overcome any problem than that one, as we have done Thank that one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Um, sir, Dr. Do Orban, you take uh, would you like? Yes. Yes, please, go ahead. Go ahead. I have to go back to the chat line as well. Please, go ahead, Dr. Orban. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you very you. much, uh, Dr. Bakai. I am a water expert in California. 40 mm -hmm. years of working for the California government. And I am really impressed about the breadth of the experts you have discussing different items. However, I am uh, sort of uh, wondering why nothing is told about groundwater. Because, as you know, for the past 42 years, 43 years, even before then, Iran did not have enough water to feed about 30 million. Aside from the agriculture today is far, far more uh, developed than what it was before. And in some cases, unfortunately, Iran is exporting a lot of watermelons and very high demanding water products. So the agriculture has broken back of all the water supply in Iran. 
for the past 42 years, as far as I know, Iran has expanded three times more than its share of water coming from above. It's a man-made problem. All the underground reservoirs have been emptied. These were the storages developed over thousands of years. Now those are all causing sinkholes, subsidences, and other problems. Now the big prop, the big project that I saw, which is very impressive, pumping the water, desalinization, desalinizing it, and taking it to the desert, making the desert flourish, while we have huge amount of you know, you know, all the land from Tehran up towards Azerbaijan. I come from Azerbaijan and I'm quite familiar. I lived in Iran for 20 years and I've been in America for 50. But I go and I have some expertise about Lake Urmia, Azerbaijan, and all the land from Tehran up. Nothing is told about how to deal with those kind of problems. Those are catastrophes to happen. Deserts to be under making in Azerbaijan area because somebody said 200,000 wells. However, I've heard anywhere from 760,000 wells mm -hmm. and deepening the deep wells, which started 46,000 back in, uh, back in 1950, excuse me, 1974 up to about from 46,000 up to about 760,000. In other words, Iran is sitting on a, uh, what is it called, a strain that has holes. No matter what, how much water you put at the top, it'll go down. Once you have 200, 300 meters of air filled land underneath, it's gonna subside, it's going to cause a lot of problems. Nobody has really talked about how to inject water on, you know, save water underground rather than shipping the water all the way up to Caspian Sea that we only have only 15% right for the Caspian Sea water. Now, it is an enormous project and with the animation, it's beautiful. However, they say here, where's the beef? Where's the money? How can you do all of those? Anything and everything you mentioned, your, uh, uh, your experts mentioned, those are all doable and being done all over the world. California did it back in 1964, what you're trying to do today. So it's doable. It's the money, will, and I go back when Shah was in power, what he was saying, Unfortunately, we are not saying that. Iran cannot be an agriculture exporting country. We are arid and semi-arid land. If we get enough for ourselves and get rid of, you know, it, it's okay to import watermelons, import water demanding cheap products. That's what the Shah did. The Shah had great plan. Anyway, I don't want to bore you. I don't want to lecture no, thank anyone. You. Thank you very I'm much, Dr. Holmes. And I thank you very much. Thank you for uh, uh, having <laughs> your insight into this, actually. If, uh, can, I, can I just... Please, uh, go ahead. Where is, the, where is yeah. the beef? Where is the beef, Dr. Horwan is Adivokan? If we are in Iran, this project will be a national project. <laughs> and the national project is supported by the government. And comparing the amount of money that is going to be used for this project is nothing really. It's a peanut. And any government can make, they can support that one. As I said, this is a national project. There will be a, a, a company should be established like that of the Iranian oil company to overlook this project for the uh, for completion of it. So that's where, in fact, the money will come from. From. And once the project begins, this project is also 
support itself as it goes along, it will also regenerate money for itself. So there are potential in that one. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. I, I just want one more word to this thing, if you are well. Uh, yes. uh, Dr. Ormaz, uh, the emphasis is after change of regime in Iran. Always remember that we cannot do any of what we have proposed. It cannot be done. Uh, the, the, the economy is not there. The interest is not there. The direction is not there. The management is not there. The, definitely the funds are not there. We all agree and 100% agree with you. Where is the beef? Yes, the beef is there. After this, vultures leave the beef to us. If anything is well, left, of I, course, after that, if anything I is will, left. Actually, <laughs> I will contribute some from my heart and my expertise for free. I thank you. Was, I would appreciate if someone really assess the groundwater issues and please get the easier places to be done first. The fertile land does not have enough water. So let's cultivate those first. And then, sure, it is national project. Even national projects do need money. And the government, the way that what they have done now, the whole country is bankrupt. And they've really taken everything. They've stolen everything. But anyway, I appreciate it. I'm all with you. I'm just, I'm not thank really, um, yeah. I thank you we much. Need, we need your, we need need your expertise, uh, Dr. Orban Zadeh. Thank can I, can you. I Mr. Just, yeah, uh, can, I just, uh, can I just add the comment? Dr. Orban Zadeh, if you read the uh, United Nations report that for 2050, the world uh, farmers need to produce 70% more food than they are producing now, today. It is the urgency, not just for Iran, it's around the world. Mm -hmm. Project like this is inevitable around the world, which has the same geographical uh, position. I'm very surprised that you are the water expert and cannot see the urgency of the need of water for Iran. It's not just a, a question of uh, like taking a water to desert. You talk about uh, uh, underground, underground water. You, mm. Underground water, as you know, is not like you can uh, take a syringe and uh, inject the water to underground. It takes time. Uh, it, gets, it, it takes time. The underground water would come up when the government of Iran produced water for farmers. When the farmer have enough water, obviously they won't use the well and the underground water will come up. But, uh, you know, uh, you talked about Azerbaijan. This project we didn't mention, but if we read where the Albors Mountain is, if we take the uh, water to 200 meter higher, we can uh, channel from there to Urumia and the water would go there in that uh, way. So you can, you know, the farmer can use that and uh, develop their uh, agriculture. There is a lot area. to discuss. Anyway. Lot I mean, to we, discuss. Need, we need to discuss mm -hmm. this in, in great detail, okay. obviously. I'm, just, I'm more concerned about a priority. Right. I am oh, all for what? But anyway, I do not want to... Uh, get into okay one-on-one you know, uh, -on -one arguments or anything like that i am all for it all i'm saying is no 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 we'll, we'll, we'll continue for this for we'll continue with Definitely. all right thank you sure thank you thank you very much sir. so, so i appreciate it well, thank you very much we estimated with today's price we uh with today's price in iranian you know um, amount of dollars Dollars. In dollars, no, in Iranian, uh, like a uh, uh, labor cost. Like the rally. Cost. If we start yes. now, it will it yes. cost fifty billion oh, dollars. Lots call it uh, not permission. Because if, uh, as we mentioned, 
if we, the, as we go along, say first Jasburian, we develop that area, the country would produce after 23 years, will produce $700 billion in terms of agricultural progress. So it would pay itself, pay it's, itself no back. problem. Okay. Dr. Money. Dr. Mohsen, you wanted to Sorry. interject, Sorry, Dr. please, Dr. Mohsen. Just, just the point uh, to remember for, um, especially Dr. Orban Sadeh, um, that, that saw a lot of comment, they shown, they shown um, you had a number of uh, uh, you, you have a number of good points um just as a reminder there are two points that i would like to uh, comment on one is i want to draw the attention of uh, everyone to the fact that they're within the water topic of water we have a water shortage and we have a water mismanagement issue. Okay. If we fix the management part of the water, perhaps we can save as much as 20% of what is currently available, uh, meaning available to use. But Eventually, we are going to need to bring water into the Iran's plateau. Um, as you said, all of the depleted uh, underground resources of water, right now, currently, we have 6 million kilometer of cubic of water deficit every year with increased number of the wells um, that has been without permission, with permission, and with a special permission has been um, basically done in Iran. Uh, they are taking out far more than what it we get back in there on a yearly basis. Uh, so no wonder that we see all of those sinkholes, depressions, and uh, basically collapsing um, of the even uh, has, uh, uh, has reached into our uh, farmlands. Uh, and it's not only on the streets of the cities and urban areas, it's also into the uh, farming areas. The second point was this, uh, as you said that before in the um, Shah's time, they determined that there was, it was not feasible for Iran to um, <clears throat> make a proficient agriculture, efficient or self-sufficient agriculture because of the climate um, and the situation that we had. We have to really consider the fact that really right now, one of the things that I pointed out was the use of biotechnology for drought resistant plants. There are this opportunity available. We can make um, basically plants, uh, seeds for the uh, crops plant um, that need only use a minimum amount of water to grow and proliferate. Um, I had um, uh, by accident visited with someone who in the right around the, um, the 2500 of um, kingdom celebration was in Iran and he happened to be one of the or leader of the teams that went to evaluate the situ agriculture situation, feasibility in Iran. And uh, he came out and flatly told me, um, he said uh, that he and his coworkers recommended that with all of the money that Iran was getting from 
petrol oil, basically, Iran was earning. There is no need and is not going to be feasible, cost benefitly uh, feasible for Iran to engage into uh, conducting agriculture. They can purchase everything from outside. He said, now um, I wish the, your king was alive. I could do that to him, but I do apologize to you and all of your compatriots because we misled them. And this is the man who was <clears throat> heading that group um, visiting Iran. So please consider this. Um, and um, as I said, you had a lots of good points, valid points, but I just wanted to bring it to your attention that thank the situation much, has changed, the environment has changed. And uh, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Let's go to more questions. We have only 15 more minutes because we have to leave the room in 15 minutes. So I would appreciate. Uh, there are some, uh, you know, comments, and uh, Mr. Rafi, who's not in the room, I think, anymore, has said, has there been any feasibility study or costing for these steps in the project? As Mr. Ziari mentioned, there has been some cost estimation and some feasibility in terms of, you know, desktop feasibility, let's call it. Desktop mm -hmm. visibilities has been done, uh, but obviously, this project, as I said right from beginning, it is a concept that we are uh, proposing here, and uh, you know th there is a lot of work needs to be done. I mean, the, the little section that I mentioned about biodesalination, it has to be done in the lab. We have to bring saline soil to the lab and do work with these uh, bacteria, with these microorganisms on it to see if we can desalinate it. So. I can't say straight away, yes, it will be done. Yes, it will be definite, but we need, we need time and we need uh, you know, feasibility studies to be done with this. Um, May I Ambassador add? Avivi left, sorry, sorry. Ambassador mm -hmm. Avivi left, a, mes uh, left a, a message there that in Israel, we are teaching the children to save water. This is going back to the times when we did not have water. By the way, I think our uh, gathering at the moment is all Iranian. So if you prefer to speak in Farsi, you uh, are more than welcome. May I add, Dr. Bagai, to the, your comment is that, uh, that uh, Professor yes. Lyons from the uh, University of uh, California yes. in Harvard, yes. uh, as you remember, offered us uh, to use his laboratory when he was, so he can help us yes. with this. Yes. Yes. Uh, many Absolutely. of these feasibility of his studies in that because he offered these laboratories that can be used for our studies. Yes, absolutely. Uh, there is another question, sorry, I'm just going quickly through this. Uh, Mr. Roboti uh, has asked uh, the, Mr. Ziari, thank you for your presentation. In the class, we studied about progress uh, earth in the channel, uh, the hormones, hormones, uh, the straight up hormones. As you know, most of area in Sistan, Baluchistan province became dry and the people left their area. This showing we lost most of the underground water. My question is, despite of climate temperature goes up, how could we save underground water? I think we discussed this uh, question with the help of Dr. Gorbanzade and uh, the, Mr. Roboti, we will touch on these in more details, yeah, I think, but, again. But, but if you want to add no, something, just, please. Just a very brief thing. You know, like people asking about uh, underground water. Underground water, as Dr. Orban is other, is, uh, he probably know, is not a thing that, uh, you know, you can save it. You can save it by not using it too much. Mm. The same as we uh, in, in our introduction, we show you Ghanat, how people use the underground water in a sufficient way so they were not damaging the underground water. But unfortunately, as uh, uh, you know, there is no underground water anymore in Iran. Yeah. Thank you. And, um, Yes, yes sir. sorry. One Dr. Abhi has uh, questions as well. And can I, can, let me finish the questions, Dr. Warwanza. If there is time, we'll come back okay. to you. Th thank you, please. Uh, 
Uh, Mr. Mirian has said uh, with the topography shown on uh, Mr. Ziari's plan, all the lakes will create high clouds and the usually east driven wind will take the rain into Pakistan and Afghanistan. What is your calculation in this regards? Because the lakes which will be produced in eastern part of Iran yeah. and things, no, is the, what I will mean, happen? First of all, you cannot control the wind. But the thing is, uh, this uh, desert is in the middle of two, two huge mountains. So if the wind uh, is produced there, it would be from south to north, not from east to west, because east and west, there are two huge mountains. So, you, you know, it would create like a channel from south to north. No, is unlikely to go to Afghanistan or uh, things like well, that. Well, that's that, that's I mean, that's out, that, that out of the control, control, of, of, the control obviously, but there are a lot of yeah. eastwardly uh, yeah, winds in Iran local, as well. But locally, so we yeah. have to say, especially in Sistan, Baluchistan, yeah. actually, uh, that we have. Uh, Mr. Mirian also has commented actually with the resources that Iran has, this project can start tomorrow. Uh, well, I, well not I have, I have tomorrow I, no, I, I don't think with uh, the political situation mm -hmm. and economic situation at the moment, it is not possible. Professor Safavi, you have a question for Dr. Mohseni, please go ahead, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, uh, gentlemen. I see the lady has left, so we could say good evening, gentlemen. Uh, Dr. Mohseni, uh, you and I go back a long time, so you know me. I, I, I love projects for the future, but I'm more concerned about the situation at present. The question I have for you is from a friend of mine from Isfahan. After the diversion of Zion Daru, a shortage of water in Isfahan. He and a group of people who were cultivating melons and watermelons and oh, well, cantaloupes. They have also your voice. You, you, I, I really have a hard time to hear your voice. Professor Safavi, your voice fluctuates again, like the other nights that could you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, yes. Now, yes. Yes. I yes. Think come closer. Yes, come that. closer. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, a friend of mine used to cultivate watermelons, melons, and cantaloupe in the Swahan area. I can't, I can't hear you. It doesn't matter. I, I will talk to Dr. Mostar. <laughs> دوستان اگر دیگه سوالی نیستش با اجازهتون خیلی هم خسته شدید مسلح من چهار ساعت اینجا ما برنامه داشتیم میبخشید به خاطر تکنیکال ایشیوهایی که داشتیم و جریاناتی که پیش اومد و هر حال همیشه اینجور مسائل هستش ولی این حقیقتش یک آغازی بود یک آغازی بود ما خواستیم این پروژه رو به خصوص دوستان عزیزم مند سیاری جناب دکتر محسنی جناب دکتر لاهوتی جناب دکتر آل رزا و جناب صدیقی که لطف دارن همیشه به همه ما این کار رو انجام بیدیم جناب دکتر کشفی هم نبودن اینجا در بین ما جناب دکتر منصور کشفی از متخصصین نفت هستن که اگر بودن میتونستن راجع به مسائل نفت و گازی که ما احتیاج داریم برای اینطور پروژه ای به خصوص گاز همونطور که جناب دکتر آل رضا گفتن بیشتر از ایشون استفاده ببریم امیدوارم در نشست های آینده حالا من سعی می کنم با کمک دوستان و دوستانی که علاقه من هستن جلساتی بگذاریم هر از گاهی و از داده اینجا هستن که در این زمینه دست دارن و جناب میریان هم فکر می کنم اگر اشتباه 
اشتباه نکنم متخصص هستن بر حال خیلی سپاسگزاریم این برنامه ضبط شده ضبط میشه الان روی کامپیوتر من, من متاسفانه نتونستم روی فکر کنم یوتیوب بگذارم به خاطر رستریکشن هایی که دانشگاه میگذاره اینجا روی وای فای سیستمش که لایو استریمی نکنیم ولی دوست عزیزم آیه فرزام کرباسی ضبط کردن و روی اینستاگرام هم پخ شده که قابل دسترسی خواهد بود و از طریق ویس آف امریکا هم میبینم هنوز تشریف دارن اینجا و انجام شده حال یک دنیا سپاسگزار از همه دوستان خیلی سپاسگزار اگر صحبت دیگه پایانی هستش دوستان که مایلید انجام بدید جناب دکتر آل رزا اگر هر کدوم از دوستان صحبتی هست بفرمایید و جلسه رو به پایان بده سپاسگزار من فقط میخواستم این بگم که یکی از منظور این پریزنتیشن امروز این بود که ما انکرج بکنیم کسانی که اکسپرتیز دارن در قسمت های مختلف این پروژه برای که این پروژه هم همه طور مهندس و ساینتیست و اینا لازم داره هیچ کدوم ما در تمام این کار وارد نیستیم ولی هر کسی که اون قسمت مخصوص خودش میتونه کمکی بکن به این پروژه We totally welcome it برای که این پروژه در آینده به قسمت های مختلف تقسیم خواهد شد هر کسی بتونه تو یکی از اون قسمت ها کار کنه آبرسانیخ میتونه کار بکنه برای لوله کشی میتونه کار بکنه برای دیسلنیزیشن میخواد کار کنه روی اگرکارچر میخواد کار کنه روی محیط زیستی میخواد کار کنه هر کسی که میخواد در یکی از این گروه ها کار بکنه من ازشون خواهش میکنم که با آقای دکتر بقایی تماس بگیرن یا بقیه دوستان که بتونیم از این گروه ها از این استعداد ها از این تجربه های زیاد بتونیم استفاده بکنیم و این پروژه رو به قدم بعدیش برسونیم که یعنی از نظر کانسپت هست یک کمی کنسپتش هم بتونیم اپروف بکنیم که این کنسپشنیلی ایز پاس من تشکر بکنم از تمامی که کسانی که من پاس بزار که این بطلب و این رو به وجود رو بردن مرسی آقای دکتر بقایی جسارتون اگر که بتر یک آدرسی یک پاس بزار از شما جناب تاریک بشه اماسی رو در اختیار دوستان بذاریم من, من با اجازتون در چت در چت ایمیل ادرس خودم رو میگذارم با اجازتون و دوستان به جیمیل جیمیل بود اگر تماسی بود دوستان میخواستن بگیرن الان در چت اگر نگاه کنید جیمیل من هستش ndyazdi at gmail.com دوستان میتونن از طریق این ایمیل با من تماس بگیرم و من هر سوالی هر چیزی که باشه خدمت دوستان میفرستم سوالی هم که از جناب آمباسادور آویوی شده بود در مورد اسرائیل اون رو هم به ایشون میرسون خیلی سپاسگزار از همه دوستان خیلی ممنون از شرکتتون و شرکتتون خیلی سپاسگزار هستم نوشته بودن که اون فردا رو که گفتن یک